Hello, welcome to this quick video about what a charter school is here in the state of Wisconsin. My name is Nick Protaski, and I work for the Wisconsin Resource Center for Charter Schools. So first of all, just take a second and think through what you know about charter schools. Jot it down, jot down your questions, your ideas, your misconceptions potentially, what you have heard in the supermarket, what you've heard at a conference. What is a charter school? Well, the definition that we have coined here in Wisconsin is charter schools are public, non-sectarian schools created through a business-like contract or a charter between the governance board and an authorizing board. So let's dig into that just a little bit. With this infographic, you can see that there are two circles that are connected by the charter contract. And again, that's the, where the word charter comes from. It's another um, word for, for contract. So these are contract schools. And the contract is between a charter school authorizer and a charter school governing board. The authorizer expects results, but because they're expecting these results, they are giving autonomies to a governing board that governs a school. They're giving them autonomies over program, over staffing, potentially calendar, start and end dates of the day or start and end dates of the school year, financial decisions, different hiring procedures, policies, those autonomies are clearly spelled out in the contract. The charter school governing board that's overseeing the school is delivering results based on those autonomies that were given. And those results are also spelled out in the contract. Those results are student learning, financial sustainability, that the, that the budget um, ends meet, operational um, performance, uh, the school is safe, the school is meeting the best interests um, of, of its students. And clearly spelled out in that contract are measurable outcomes that measure these results so that the authorizer and the governance board can easily monitor and understand if a school is on track to meet those performance measures or not. Charter contracts we typically see are between three and five years in length. Those charter school authorizers are ensuring that autonomy is there for their schools, but they're also holding those schools accountable and holding those schools to ensuring that the best interests of students are in mind. Who are our authorizers? Nationally, you can see that school districts, LEAs, your local school district is our number one authorizer for charter schools nationally. And it is very true here in Wisconsin that the number one authorizer um, here are our school districts. Who else can authorize in the state of Wisconsin? Well, all public school districts, as we have discussed, and they enter into uh, instrumentality charter schools or non-instrumentality charter schools. That contract differs a little bit. And the way it differs is if the school district is still going to be staffing that public school, then it will be an instrument of that school district. And we call those instrumentality charter schools that's spelled out in the contract. If the staffing, the HR of the charter school is going to be done by the school, um, the governing board of that charter school, then they're considered a non-instrumentality charter school. And those are both authorized by public school districts. Other authorizers in the state of Wisconsin could be institutions of higher ed, which we include the College of Menominee Nation, the Kudure Ojibwe Community College, UW System has an authorizer, the chancellor of um, any institution in the UW um, system, and each technical college board of all of our technical schools could also be authorizers. The two non-governmental entities are the Common Council in the city of Milwaukee and the Waukesha County Executive. So any of these folks that are listed on this slide could be the authorizer that's authorizing a charter contract um, to, to authorize a charter school. And in those contracts, the, the, um, the autonomies are spelled out.
So why have a charter school? I'm curious for you to answer this question. Why would you have a charter school? If you're watching this video, what made you turn it on? What questions do you, do you potentially have? Go ahead and jot those down now. Well, let's look at the who. Depending on who's watching this video, depending on who is um, thinking about having a charter school, the why might differ. So we have our authorizer is a key player. Authorizers authorize charter schools for certain purposes, to build their portfolio, to have different offerings for their community, whether they are an independent authorizer or a school district. Our governing boards tend to um, be very interested in the mission and the vision of that charter school. They understand a need in their community and they feel that their charter school or charter schools are meeting those specific missions and visions. Um, and so they hold that school accountable. That's what their interests lie. School leaders um, may uh, feel that the autonomies that are afforded to them in the charter school contract allows them to operate or to lead a school in the way in which they, um, they, they, they think is most effective. And then our classroom educators, many different models we will see in our charter schools and because of some of the waivers um, within our state statute and as well as the autonomies that are afforded to charter schools in the charter school contract allows, to, allows charter schools to have a very diverse um, opportunity, very, very different opportunities to, to have a make and a model for your school. And that, and there are educators and there are community partners that, um, that see those different models as potentially um, meeting the need of a, of, a, of a group of students or a community um, in which their needs are not being met with maybe the traditional school models. So let's, let's just dive into those. Here are the three major ones that we see, and I, and I, and I believe my, my picture is probably covering up the, the top right. So we'll start there, and that's financial sustainability. Our charter schools could be a model, could be an incubator to demonstrate how we can do finances, how we can budget our schools in a little different fashion, depending on staffing and depending on leadership and depending on how um, and what that day uh, of the education um, of the school looks like. Community connections, it brings in um, different community members that, that can be involved in the, in the school, especially with those community groups um, have a, a key or, or are key players in that unique mission and vision. Family and student choice, so uh, many of our, uh, of our LEAs, our school district authorizers, um, want to make sure that in their school district, that school district school board wants to ensure that there's many different opportunities for different students. They recognize that not all students um, should be or could be um, all educated in the same way. So you'll see those, um, those authorizers wanting to authorize for family choice. And you know, parent groups and, and things are also looking for different opportunities for their children. With autonomy comes accountability. Clearly spelled out in a contract are those accountability measures or those performance measures. Sometimes that makes more sense for an authorizer to be able to clearly spell out what makes the school successful. And it's not just academic performance. It could be social emotional learning. Um, it could be other outcomes that, that that school is presenting. But being able to spell that out on a contract could be very advantageous to an authorizer and a school leader who wants to be able to tell the story of what success looks like in their school. Learning improvement um, and um, to meet the needs of all students, and that's in caps. And what, why that's there is different school models um, could have specific groups of students in mind. Not all students are successful um, in our traditional schools. And when we see that there are needs um, of, of different populations of students, we could have charter schools that are specifically designed to meet those student needs. In, in, and that could be spelled out in a variety of ways. Charter schools are open to all students and cannot um, only open their doors to a select group of students, no matter if that group of students is, is an educationally disadvantaged student or not. Um, they, all charter schools are open to all students, but charter schools can be specifically designed to meet a certain um, group of students' needs. And then the last, as an incubation or as an innovation center, if a school district or a community really wants to incubate an idea that they think could affect or could posit positively impact the greater system as a whole, you can start small with a charter school that has a very specific mission and vision um, to 
to operate to to put into operation the idea or the idea of this innovation or this incubation, whether that's competency based education or a different way or, or um, like a, a longer calendar uh, for 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 learning or other different systems that we think could be uh, beneficial to the larger whole, you can start with a smaller incubation center or a smaller charter school um, to, to see how well that plays out in the community and then that can disseminate to the greater whole. Check out our Wisconsin Charter Schools yearbook that's on our website, wrccs.org, um, and you can view charter schools all over the state of Wisconsin, what their unique models are, um, and, and where they're located. And you can see here, we have charter schools all over the state and are authorized by, by different institutions and different school districts all over the state of Wisconsin. Quick summary. Charter simply is a contract, right? excuse me, and in that contract, it spells out the specifics. Also, oftentimes people call our office and they ask about specifics, can a charter do? And oftentimes we ask them to refer to what the charter contract says, all right? Charters are no additional cost to a student or a family. Um, Wisconsin school districts are, um, are absolutely able to not only serve as authorizers, they are our number one authorizer in our state. It, independent charter schools are authorized um, by separate um, governmental entities and um, except our virtual charter schools do need to be authorized by a school district. And uh, just so you're aware, DPI has a charter school website and, and many resources available to you as well as Wisconsin Resource Center for Charter Schools. And currently there is some federal funding sitting at the Department of Public Instruction here in Wisconsin that could help um, with, uh, with the growth of, of chartering in, in the state of Wisconsin. And here is that grant that is available. It, it's coming up here in, in November. It will be opening up November of 2020. Um, and it is available for the next few years, up to $900,000, and that is to expand existing charter schools, repl replicate our high performing charter schools, or if there are new charter school designs or new needs that you see in your community in which a charter school could help meet those needs, there are um, funds available for new designs or, or new startup charter schools in our state. How can we help you? We are here to personalize our support here at the Wisconsin Resource Center for Charter Schools. Do not hesitate to reach out either to Sarah or myself. We would love to support your work, answer more questions about what a charter school is, how it could um, be of benefit in your community, or see all of our resources available at no cost to you, wrccs.org. Thank you all for spending the time watching this video, and we hope we can partner with you soon. Have a, have a great rest of your day.